lecture we would like to explain the notion of curvature of a Riemannian manifold. So I'm going to assume that we all know the definition of a Riemannian manifold, say denoted by denoted by M G. So recall that to any Riemannian manifold we so let's say we have a Riemannian manifold here then in neighborhood of any point let's say P nu we have local coordinates and if the manifold is n-dimensional typically denote the coordinates like this and so this is inherited from the fact that a manifold, of course, locally looks like Rn. So we here have this map, phi p, and these are smooth because we assume that Riemannian manifolds are, in particular, smooth manifolds. Now, there's a canonical set of coordinates given by uh, the exponential mapping. So let's briefly recall the definition. So let's say I've got a piece of my Riemannian manifold here and I fix a point P then I can look at the tangent space at the point P which is simply the span of the coordinate partial derivatives viewed as tangent vectors at this point. So it's an n-dimensional vector space. Okay, so what does the exponential map do? Well, we can look at a particular vector v in the tangent space, so v, v tpm, and we can look at a geodesic, so remember that a geodesic is a locally length minimizing curve minimizing curve in the manifold and we can look at the geodesic that starts at the point P with an initial velocity of V and we can canonically map the tangent space at the point P to the manifold itself by simply sending the vector V to the end point of this geodesic here. And so at least locally, so at least locally, This map is a diffeomorphism. So it's a smooth map with smooth inverse. Now we have these canonical coordinates now. So we've got a local identification of a neighborhood of this point P with some copy of Rn. Remember that the tangent space is an n-dimensional vector space, so it's isomorphic to Rn and we have a canonical set of coordinates. So these are often called geodesic Riemannian coordinates, sometimes Riemannian normal coordinates. And in these coordinates, we can compute the Taylor expansion of the metric. So compute the Taylor expansion of the coefficients of the metric. If we do this, what we find is that gij equals, well, up to first order it's the Euclidean, but then at the quadratic level we get a minus one-third R I J K L X K X L 
plus higher order terms. And this tensor here, this is a 4, 0 tensor, is the Riemannian curvature tensor. So the Riemannian curvature tensor. So what does this do intuitively? Well, remember that the metric measures lengths between geodesics. And so this is a quadratic error term. So the Riemannian curvature tensor measures curvature tensor measures the extent to which distances between geodesics are distorted under the exponential map. So just to have a clear idea of what we're talking about, let's just, just mention some standard examples. So if we take the two-sphere, then the Riemannian curvature tensor, which we'll just denote by Rm, has, well, if we equip it with the round metric, then the round metric has constant curvature plus one everywhere. If we look at the flat torus, so torus with the flat metric, then this has curvature zero, and if we look at the hyper at hyperbolic space, so I'm just going to draw hyperbolic space. This is how I like to think about it. So this is this is not your standard picture of hyperbolic space, but this is an example. You should think of hyperbolic space as being bent in. The typical example is, is the, obviously the disk with the Poincaré metric, so Poincaré. But it's more enlightening to view the hyperbolic space in this way. Okay, so there are other types of curvature that we've heard about. We've heard about the, the Ricci curvature. It's famous from the Ricci flow and the solution of the uh, Poincaré conjecture. So. What is the Ricci curvature? Well, if I've got a Riemannian metric, then I, I can get a volume form by taking the determinant of the metric, taking the square root of the determinant of the metric, and then multiply it by the by this so I can, by the standard Euclidean volume form. So I can compute the Taylor expansion of this. So let's let's denote this thing by d mu. So I can call d mu g to emphasize that it's from the metric. And what do I get? Well, I get one arising from the previous uh, metric. Now, since I have a square root of the determinant, I'll get a one minus one sixth r j k xj, xk plus higher order terms times the Euclidean answer. And then this tensor here, this 2, 0 tensor, this is called the Ricci curvature tensor. And so look at it, it's a quadratic correction term of the volume element. So intuitively here, the Ricci curvature measures the extent to which volumes along geodesics are distorted. And 
finally, it's hard to give pictures of this because the Ramanian curvature tensor and the Ricci curvature tensor are the same in dimensions less than four, and we can't draw four dimensions. The final uh, tensor we want to discuss is the scalar curvature, the last form of curvature, and this is where you look at the correction term between volumes of balls. So let's say I take the volume of a ball of let's say a small radius epsilon around a point P in the manifold, uh, in the manifold, the manifold is M, then this will be given by 1 over 6 n plus 2 by epsilon squared plus higher order terms times the volume of all of the corresponding radius, say around the origin, in Rn. And so the scalar curvature, uh, I should write S, missed the tensor. Uh, so S is the scalar curvature. So the scalar curvature is the quadratic correction term for the volumes of balls. Uh, the, when you compare the volume of the ball of a small radius in the manifold, compare with the volume of the ball of the same radius in, in Rn. And that completes the explanation of the curvature tensors. Remember that the Ramanian curvature tensor measure the extent to which distances between geodesics are distorted under the exponential mapping. The Ricci curvature tensor measures the extent to which volumes along geodesics are distorted. And the scalar curvature measures the, the extent to which the exponential map distorts volumes of balls.